हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई डॉक्टर युक्ति शर्मा फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली विल बी डिस्कसिंग विद यू टुडे ऑन वैल्यू इन कल्केशन थ्रू साइंस फर्स्ट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज और वॉट आर वैल्यूज वैल्यूज कैन बी डिफाइंड एज वॉट वन बिलीव इन प्रैक्टिस एंड लर्न फ्रॉम एक्सपीरियंसिस एंड दस फॉर इनकल्केशन ऑफ वैल्यूज इन चिल्ड्रेन appropriate experiences are very essential because values cannot be preached as it is said values are not taught they are caught hence each activity should have a context in the form of some contemporary issue or concern for example if we are looking at the contemporary issue of environmental change definitely we would like to inculcate the value of sensitivity amongst our learners and till we will not talk about this context of environmental change we will not be able to talk about the value of sensitivity that we want to inculcate in children also the activities should be based on the premises that children may already have values innately present in them and there is a need to create experiences and opportunities that could encourage children to put them into practice also every component of the school should contribute towards inculcating the desired values in the children through set of activities embedded in the school curriculum every activity when i say i mean that we should not have a single period which is dedicated to inculcation of values every component means every subject every discipline every co curricular activity or if we call every extra curricular activity any activity happening in the school should contribute towards inculcation of values in children if we dedicate only one class or one lesson for value inculcation it remains a mere preaching and so one such essential component of school education is science science teaching and science learning so let's understand the role of science in inculcation of values science as we understand is one of the subjects or in larger perspective it is a discipline which has three aspects to it scientific knowledge which is the product of science scientific method which is the process of science and scientific thinking which involves a particular kind of thinking which involves rational thinking thinking based on reason so all these three aspects of science scientific knowledge scientific processes and scientific thinking should be involved and should enable the learners to develop various aspects of their personality means the teaching learning in science should act like a medium that helps in nurturing the potentialities of learners in every aspect of their personality now when we are talking of different aspects of personality we need to know what are these different aspects of personality we will talk about different aspects of personality by talking about the taxonomy of objectives that bloom has given bloom in 1956 had proposed that on the basis of various thinking abilities vis-a-vis behavior of learners there are three major domains of objectives which are related to three aspects of their personality one is the cognitive domain which we know is related to knowledge and intellectual thinking so if we are talking in terms of science the cognitive domain is related to the scientific knowledge or scientific intellectual thinking the second is the affective domain which is related to the non cognitive aspect of the learner's personality and this involves interest attitude sensitivity appreciation beliefs and values towards a scientific concept the third is the psychomotor domain which is related to the skills related to scientific method whether physical skills or mental skills 
In this presentation, we will look into detail the affective domain of objectives, which is related to the non-cognitive aspect of the learner's personality. Because this is the domain of the personality or aspect of the personality, which is related to values. Now, based on the ideas that learning experiences should not only develop the learners cognitively, but also emotionally and socially, this domain obje of objectives is very, very important. Because this domain of objectives acknowledges the fact that there is one aspect of personality which is non-cognitive, means which is related to one's values what a person prioritizes in life. Also, these are reflections of the feelings and emotions of the learners in terms of their interest, attitude, sensitivity, appreciation and values towards a particular concept. This set of objectives were further divided into five categories on the basis of learners demonstrated behavior that shows the extent of his or her association with the concept. The first is called as, the first objective in this domain is called as receiving. Receiving is to demonstrate behaviors that show that the learners are aware of the issue and they are willing to know more about it means that the learner simply wants to know about a particular issue and for that the learner is ready to work also, to work towards it. The second is responding. Responding means that the learner already knows about the issue but now the learner has started responding towards it means started speaking for it. So maybe the learner is able to explain the particular issue or share his or her own idea about that particular issue. The third is valuing. Valuing is to demonstrate the behaviors that show their commitment to the cause, which is not because of compliance to any norms, but because the learner himself or herself feels for the cause. The fourth is organization, means to demonstrate behaviors that show their ability to organize activities which are related to a cause as per the situation. And the fifth one is characterization by a value complex. That is to demonstrate behaviors which show their inclination to act according to certain values that they might have internalized during the learning experience. Now to better understand these objectives, let's discuss the difference between any of these two objectives. Suppose in a science class, the issue of water conservation is being discussed. Now, if one child wants to know about the reasons for which water conservation is required and only limited to that, that shows that the child is only interested in the information or knowledge which is related to water conservation. And so we can somewhere equate it to the first level of objective that is receiving. That means the child only wants to know about this concept or this issue. Whereas on the other hand, the child, other child starts thinking about the ways in which he or she can conserve or save water in her daily life. Now in this case, the child not only understands the issue, understands the concept, but is also able to translate that understanding into real life situation by thinking about some of the initiatives or ways or practices that can be done at his or her end for that particular issue. So this could be equated to the third level of objectives that is valuing. So this shows that Two children in the same class may be acting in a different way, which shows that from which level are they thinking about or acting for a particular issue or concept. Thus, from receiving to the other objectives, that is responding, valuing, organization, 
the extent to which a child has internalized a value and is engaging with that value increases. Let's take an example to understand now how these objectives can be translated into behavior. Now suppose we want to nurture their sensitivity towards environment in a science class. We are taking sensitivity towards environment as one of the values. We need to organize the following activities. Keeping in mind the taxonomy of objectives within the effective domain, the first essential part is receiving. That means at least the learner should know that what are the basic concepts related to the issue and how does science explain them or how does science helps us in understanding them. So for that the kind of activities that we require are discussions, skits, street plays, poster making, showcasing some documentaries on those issues so that the child understands the scientific understanding or the scientific premises or rationale behind those issues. And this creates an awareness in the child. For example, if you are talking about global warming. Now the issue of global warming cannot be understood till we know or understand the scientific concepts associated with it. So this is the first step in developing the value. Also giving them opportunities to actively participate in gathering more and more information related to the issue. For example, if you are talking of global warming, they themselves go and look for information which is related to it. If we are able to do this much, that means we are able to achieve the first level of objectives with the learners. After this, once they have the information which is required to understand the issue, it's important that they internalize it by comprehending it and are also able to articulate it from their own perspective. And for this, it is important that they get opportunities where they can actively discuss their understanding in the class about the impact of global warming or the causes of global warming and how it is affecting us. And this also requires that we encourage them to think creatively and demonstrate some of the alternatives that can be used for controlling global warming at both local and individual levels. And if we are able to organize such activities, we will be able to somewhere achieve the second level of objective that is responding. Means we have motivated our students, we have equipped our students to respond to a particular issue. Although it's more theoretically, although it's more based on their understanding and the information that they have. The next step is that they start internalizing it and start valuing it. Not because of any compulsion, but because they themselves feel for it. And for that, it's important that we provide them opportunities to critically share their own ideas with conviction. They share about those practices which are related to their lifestyle and which they think may be leading to greenhouse gases or increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and thus in global warming. We should give them opportunities where they are supposed to take their own standpoint regarding the use of CFCs by providing supportive arguments. And this is the level of objective that we discussed also which is called as valuing where they are acting or critically discussing something not because they have any kind of compulsion but because they themselves feel about that issue and value it. The next is once they are ready and they have started feeling for a particular cause or issue, it's time that they should be brought into action. And therefore, they need to be given some opportunities and also some autonomy so that they can take decisions regarding the role of students, role of school, role of teachers in contributing to the cause of global warming and organizing activities in real life situations. 
Now these real life situations can be their own school. So what action can be taken in their own school that can create further awareness amongst other students also and some practices which are happening in the school and contributing towards increase in greenhouse gases could be stopped. And what alternatives can be taken before stopping those activities. So all these decisions have to be taken by these students. Similarly in their community, whether they are able to identify those activities which are contributing to increase in greenhouse gases and what can be done about them. If they are able to think about all this creatively, means that our fourth objective is achieved where they have started organizing based upon their thinking and based upon their ideas. The next level is also very important. Otherwise, we may not see that persistence in, the, in their thinking. And for the thinking to persist, it's important that they get the opportunities of self-reflection where they get a feedback from teachers and peer observation so that it helps them to see that how their actions are tied up to their thoughts so that they can see how there is an integrity in them regarding a particular value. What they are saying, they are doing that also. And that is the real value. So that self-reflection, the feedback if they get from teacher's observation, peer observation about their own task, about their own day-to-day -day conduct will further reinforce them to act in that direction. Therefore, certain points which we can draw in from this presentation are that value incul inculcation through science should be seen as a gradual stepwise process. It cannot be something which can be achieved in a day or two. It cannot be something which can be done in one class or through one lesson. But it's an ongoing process which is stepwise in nature where somewhere we begin with thinking about a concept and then go on to relating it to daily life, internalizing it, connecting it to the real life situations, learning through experiences and bringing in one's own practice. And finally, but not the least, reviewing our own practices, reviewing our own conduct. Thus, we can conclude in this presentation that inculcation of values through science cannot be seen as a one-time process. In fact, it is a stepwise process which requires a continuous and consistent effort on the part of the teachers for providing opportunities to the learners so that they can work towards a particular value. Thank you.